All right, what is up, viewers? Spang here, bringing you another World of Tanks gameplay commentary. It is day three of my post-operation recovery, so I still can't see all that well, but it looks like I can still see well enough. It uh, is going to be a standard battle on airfield. We're just waiting for it to load here, and it's going to be an, a replay sent to us by Tank Buster Andrew, another longtime follower of mine on this YouTube channel. And it's going to be in his T30. It's all camoed up, ready to go. Looks like he got some Binox on there and on the enemy team. So it's going to be a tier 10 match. And on the enemy team, it looks like we have a platoon of Alloy and Arbok. And it's that's going to be a Waffentrager on the enemy team, but it's all right. Tank Buster's team has a Waffentrager as well. And I think instead of Tank Buster, I'm just going to refer to him as Andrew. It's going to be a little bit simpler for me. But uh, overall, T30, pretty solid tank destroyer. It's got a full 360 degree turret, unlike the T110E4. It has... Pretty decent turret armor. You're definitely going to want to shoot to either side of that mantle. Even then, it might bounce, so you probably want to aim for the hatch. However, whole armor, not much to speak of. It's about on par with a T29, maybe a little bit softer. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it is definitely penetration uh, friendly when it comes to hitting him directly on his frontal whole armor. You don't even have to aim for that lower plate. Just shoot him right in this whole armor, and you're pretty much guaranteed to get through. It's not very often that it bounces. Now, the enemy team, uh, I, I was going to say the enemy team definitely having a bit of a TD advantage in terms of that 183, but an uh, E3 is also pretty good, so it, it seems like it's going to be a pretty even fight in terms of tanks per team, but still, uh, it, it's hard to say just based on what tanks each team has on how this exactly will go. Definitely a bit of a different play style you're going to see. E100 versus a 50B and E5 versus an IS7, so the enemy team seems to have a little more reliable armor. But uh, Andrew's team definitely seems to have a bit more of, you know, of gun power, and, and that's just DPM. So we'll see if they are able to definitely use that. Tank Destroyer sitting pretty far back in that uh, hilly area. Again, I can't read the exact grid coordinates. It looks like Charlie won, though. I'm not sure if I agree with that. Doing a decent job of taking that hill, eliminating that awful Panther. Not really a huge loss for the enemy team, but also nothing to just... It, it's good to have a scout tank eliminated, especially in a match with as much artillery as this one. So 3RD per team, that's definitely going to be a factor. We'll see how much. That 50 Bravo, though, pushing way far up. Looks like my vision's a little bit better in the fact that I can read that just barely. But Andrew going to have a perfect side shot on that Waffentrager. Unfortunately, he doesn't have high explosive loaded, but it still is going to penetrate and do just fine. So it is 750 average damage on that gun. I'm not sure what the pen is, but there it is, 276. So definitely a very powerful gun, a very scary gun, and something that you really need to utilize. The T-30 plays a bit more like a tank than a standard tank destroyer. Play it like the T-34 and you'll do just fine, I promise you. And a very surprising bounce there off of his hull, but it's just because of the extreme angling there. Like I said, it doesn't often happen, but in that case, it was just it, such a massive angle that it really had no chance of getting through. The enemy team, surprisingly, trying to take that center hill. That's not something you see too often. Enemy IS-7 getting ammo racked for all 2150 of his health. That is incredibly unfortunate it and Andrew quickly learning just how exposed he is to enemy already trying to make him pay a bit for that massive ammo rack and another enemy tank getting ammo racked while wow, the enemy team just not having any sort of luck whatsoever just losing tanks left and right man that was a massive kill and a little bit of the luck of the draw we all know you can aim for those ammo racks but it just happened to go right through the bottom of that IS-7 and into his turret where his ammo was stored and just so happened to be just enough to take it out. I mean, what are the odds? But it happens. I mean, you just saw it. <laughs> it, it doesn't have to have to happen often, but when it does, you're going to certainly enjoy it. The enemy team having a lot of tank destroyers along that southern ridge and Andrew's team not really having a lot down there to push that. Another tank destroyer spotted, having pretty much eyes on that same area. Andrew trying to see if he has any sort of vision on there. The enemy team closing that gap. It is 5-4. And the losses for each team here, uh, only one tier 10 for Rat... Uh, I, almost, I almost called him someone else, but um, for Andrew's team, two tier 10s for the enemy team, tier 8, tier 9 scout tank so pretty even losses so far the enemy team having lost an extra tier 10 so that's definitely going to be a factor but Andrew's team just losing their again sorry my vision is quite poor at the moment so I have to see so they're e5 so tier 10 losses now even up it could still go either way it's very lucky that Razvan 
Uh, Andrew, I am just so out of it. Please forgive me. It did manage to ammo rack that IS-7. It is the only reason this team is doing a pretty solid job of leading the way right now. And he is playing the T-30 like it is meant to be played. It's on the front lines. It's playing a bit more like a heavy tank, which is definitely a viable strategy when you're driving this. Uh, granted, he really doesn't have any team support. You usually want to have a support team with you when you're driving the T-30 because while it can be driven like a heavy tank, it should not be treated completely like a heavy tank. 183 coming up, not enough gun depression to shoot him, so he's going to be able to fall right back. And that 183 is probably already bait at this point if he decides to keep pushing up that hill. Looks like he might be a little bit distracted by what's on the side, but he really wants to push on Andrew here. And Andrew getting a little bit of tank destroyer support coming up to help him out, so his team finally moving up to support him 7-7 and it is still anyone's match that ISU however possibly gonna die but now that 183 man just barely hanging on by the skin of his teeth and unfortunately not getting enough damage on that ISU to finish him off he was if he was firing standard AP rounds he might have but unfortunately the hash rounds have seen quite a significant nerf and this is 9.2 I believe that nerf happened uh, at either on 9.2 or maybe even a little bit before that I, I don't recall. I mean, I took that extended hiatus, so I'm not sure when that patch came out that nerfed those hash rounds, but man, has it been hurting the 183's performance ever since. They were unreliable before, but now they are just almost unusable. Every now and again you get a lucky shot, but it's really not viable. Right here, looks like a T-28 trying to roll up on Andrew, and he will get a shot off, but it's not going to be an even trade. If you're going shot for shot with a T-30, you're not going to come out ahead in the end, and the enemy team still managing to hang on. It is still 8-8, eight to eight, and the enemy team had well, they had that E100. It just died. So it looks like a T95 left, a third and add, and a bit of artillery. The enemy team's going to have a hard time coming back from this, especially when Andrew's team still has an E3 and a Waffentrager. It's, uh, granted, the Waffentrager can easily be decimated by artillery if artillery manages to get their game together, but enemy already really not looking like they're doing all too much. Can't really fault them for that. Artillery at best is a 50% luck sort of thing. Most of the time you can be on your game, aiming, leading targets perfectly, aiming in all the way, and when you take the shot, it still misses. Sorry there for the little mic bump. And it, it, it's, it's one of the things that makes artillery very frustrating to play. Still, the enemy team managing to eliminate another tank. Nothing too significant. Wasn't any of the tier 10s. And there we go. Ferdinand getting eliminated. All that remains is that T95 and enemy already. It's pretty much all but over now. And it's Andrew just looking to get in a little bit more damage, possibly soften up this T95, who's soon going to be Artie Bay, and hopefully he can get in some damage here. There we go. Artillery probably going to finish him off, and then it's just down to Artie hunting and capturing the base out. Uh, looks like enemy Artie managing to eliminate that Waffentrager. What did I say? An easy kill. Enemy Artie, uh, I mean friendly Artie eliminating that T95. Like I said, he was Artie baited as well. And so at this point, that E3, I'm not sure how much health he has left, but he certainly could possibly be killed by artillery, considering the artillery that is playable on this map. But uh, available, not necessarily playable. You know what I meant, though. And... It's, but like I said, it's now in the coffin. There's really no hope for this enemy team. They would have to be extremely lucky. Andrew is a one-shot, but, I mean, what are the chances he's going to get TD mode? Uh, there we go. The enemy already pretty much all but wrapped up. That last one probably up in the corner there, approximately. Uh, what would be... Nope, he's actually down here. That's a little bit surprising. Uh, not a single enemy artillery piece going to the north. Not. I mean, it's not... Oh, as we see here, it's not always the case that one will go up that far, but usually you get at least one going up there, so artillery has better cross shots, able to hit more of the enemy team. And here we go, he's looking to go TD mode, maybe, but just not going to happen. So, pretty nicely played, uh, and man, that ammo rack on that IS-7. A lot of things on the enemy team just exploding left and right, and a very well played game. So let's go to those post-game stats and see the exact numbers. All right, so here we go. We see just how well he did. Mastery Badge, Ace Tanker, and High Caliber managing to really just take it to that enemy team. And there's that devastating blow, managing to just destroy that ammo rack. And apparently that was the only critical damage he did to that vehicle. But you know what? That's all he needed. And I, I'm telling you right now, I have to squint to see those numbers, but hey, I can see them. But still, 2150 going from full health to no health. That is just unfortunate for that enemy is7 there's really 
I, I RNG did not favor him. That's all there is to that. But total damage, managing to do over 7,800, so very respectable. Obvious how he earned that high caliber. And the enemy team, uh, who did the best, most damage? Their E100 being the highest damage dealer, but who earned the most experience? That T28, surprisingly, earning the most experience. So the game saying you were the most uh, effective on your team. That's usually what experience is supposed to reflect who is the most effective. And, well, I mean, experience and damage both reflect that. Tank Buster Andrew, definitely the most effective for his team. And <laughs> by no small measure was that enemy IS-7 a, a large factor in that. Still, nine for nine hits, all nine of them penetrating, and that explains how, yeah, well, he did... Uh, he must have been high rolling, though, because Let's face it, 9 times 750 is not 7,681. 7, so he was high rolling that match, RNG definitely favoring him, as if we did not know that with that um, IS-7 ammo rack. Although considering that ammo rack, he, I guess he was low rolling with the exception of that. Because you take out that one shot, and all of a sudden he's doing less than the 750 average damage per shot. So it is what it is, but still, very well played game. And definitely a lot of big booms left and right, just managing to take enemy tanks out effectively with that T-30. I wanted to bring you guys a tank destroyer match. And yeah, the T-30, like I said, it's not quite a tank destroyer, but I've been doing a lot of faster moving vehicles, and I wanted to bring you something that was a bit of a different pace. Still, he was being very aggressive, and that is not wrong with the T-30. Uh, some other tank destroyers you might want to hang back a bit further, like the 704 or the Yog Tiger. Maybe not be so aggressive with those, but a T-30? Yeah, it can handle itself, but it's definitely more of a tanky type of tank destroyer. But anyway, if you like this video, click that like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you've got a replay, be sure to check the description below for instructions on how to submit. And if you've got suggestions for how I can make these videos and my channel better, please leave them in the comments below. But until next time, this has been Spang, and I am signing off.